Good Saturday morning, boys and girls out there in the internet, YouTube land. Uh, today I thought it'd be fun to do a video that I'm shocked I've never done before. I thought I've done all C5 trivia type tech stuff to death. And there's one thing I came across in a form of the day, which is a breakdown from 97 to 2004, every subtle change. And I thought it was really fascinating. And even I learned some stuff. So I'm going to go through every year individually and show you on the card too exactly what had changed. And... Long story short, if you're in the market for a C5, I highly recommend 2001 up, and you will see why as I do this video. So let's do a little intro, and we will get into it. All right, like the intro said, we're going to break down 97 to 2004, every change. Now, about a year ago, I did a video on unique colors and unique options. This won't be heavy on that. This is more mechanical changes, um, subtle aesthetic stuff, revisions in the powertrain or mechanics, like I said. So we're going to go ahead and start with 97 and I will use my C5C in the background as a prop, if you will, to show you where the changes would be. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, from 97, obviously this is a brand new car from the ground up from the C4. Completely redesigned you had two suspension packages, the Z51 and the base, which was the FE1 option suspension. All the Z51 cars from then on out had a power steering cooler. And the brand new LS1 was introduced to the Corvette. Uh, it came with 345 horsepower and 300 foot pounds of torque. And in 98, not too many differences outside of colors. The convertible now came onto the scene as an option. And later in the 98 model year, active handling becomes standard. All right, 99 is where things start heating up a little bit. I'll start using the car behind me to show you exactly where these changes occurred. All right, in 1999, 28 pound fuel injectors, which are found underneath this fuel roll cover, were substituted for 26 pound injectors for whatever reason. Located behind the uh, driver's seat there is a fuel pump that was revised in 1999 for a more quiet unit. In 1999, the FRC was officially introduced, but not as a Z06. This was, as you see the little notch back right here, was meant to be the economy Corvette, codenamed Billy Bob. It was supposed to have no creature comforts whatsoever, roll up windows, even cloth seats. But after two years, it had a lot of popularity as, as a whole, the entire platform, and this would become the Z06. But yeah, 1999 for the first time, fixed roof coupe was available. In 1999 as well, the introduction of a HUD was given to the 99. Mine was retrofitted, I have 2001 Z06, which was not standard, and I actually threw this in myself, and I got a video on how to do that if you're curious. With the revised fuel pump, that means the fuel rail was a little different, and your fuel your fuel lines were changed going to your fuel rail. You know in 97, 98 there was two, and 99 upward, there's only one. A telescoping wheel also became an option in 1999. I have a Z06, and it was never optioned with a telescoping wheel, but it would be right underneath your stock there. Uh, next to your ambient air temperature if you did have one. Another luxurious feature offered in 199 is your door seals. Right here, your little Corvette emblem that became available in 1999 upward. All right, year 2000. We get Millennium Yellow for the first time, hence the name Millennium Yellow, because it's the year 2000. In 2000, the base frame is no longer the wagon wheel, which I actually like the wagon wheel over the thin spoke wheel which comes in chrome, I'll put a picture here as reference, but uh, given an option, if I had a base coupe, I would like the wagon wheel. I guess I'm kind of the minority there, but it is what it is. Due to emission standards, probably because California, uh, pup cats were added to right post headers, which had a loss of five horsepower on all models, unfortunately. In 2000, all of the sway bar end links up until this point were plastic. They officially become steel now, and they're actually fortified, and they're not going to break on a track. In addition, the Z51 sway bars, both front and rear, grew about 3 millimeter in diameter. If you can see it there, see that red bushing right there? That's your sway bar. Get light on it. It's an extra end leaf right there. Additionally, in the year 2000, the keyhole on the passenger side is now gone. Now, I've changed my little piece out here for a 97 or 98 model just because I had to get a new little button for our radio. But in 2000, they added a little light that showed your uh, passenger airbag on or off. And it should be about right there, but mine's just missing because mine's from an 
older model. All right, the year 2000. This is where things really heat up and there is the most changes of any year in the year 2000. And for a lot of these reasons, I recommend a 2001 and up. The return of 28 pound injectors versus 26, which I think is a great move, is back in the Corvette. On all models, that is. Second generation active handling is also introduced this year, which I highly recommend. This one's actually serviceable. Uh, if you have a 97 and 2000, it kind of sucks if your shit's the bed. In 2001, the color Nassau Blue is officially dead. I really like this color, and I'm kind of mad that never made it in a Z06 variant. It's a very popular color, I think. Uh, it's, it's too bad, and I'll have an example here of it. But nice color, and it's kind of sad that they, like I said, retired it so early. During this year on all automatics, a new, a all-standard clutch pulley added to all A4 cars. Also in 2001, the addition of more soundproofing and padding under the carpet plus foam. Now, I couldn't find clarification if that was the case on the Z06, because everything I've ever read is that they pretty much got rid of any kind of soundproofing. They had thinner windows, etc. cetera. Uh, I put total soundproofing in this entire car, and there was none. So I'm going to assume that was just for convertibles and base coupes. Now, a new key fob was introduced for 2001. This is an aftermarket, because I have an aftermarket push button start and remote start stuff, but there was actually a larger remote from 97 to 2000, which they got rid of for 2001 plus. I'll put a little stock photo here in case you're curious. A automatic dimming feature was added to all the rear mirrors in 2001 plus. A lighter AGM battery was installed during this year, but that was 20 years ago. So I'm assuming all cars have new batteries now. Anyways, it's kind of a mute point. All the convertibles got a new material and thickness to help combat exterior, wind noise, etc. For the first time, all Corvettes got a proper exhaust tip situation and they are now chrome no matter what kind of variant you got. Up until this time, they were just kind of stainless steel looking and they're kind of black and small, kind of hidden, which was really strange, but you got proper exhaust in the year 2001. Plus, this is not a stock situation. This is a Billy Boat PRT, which I love, just FYI. An 85 millimeter MAF replaces the previous 74 millimeter MAF up front. All Corvettes by this year share the LS6 intake manifold, which I feel is phenomenal for the year. Uh, just the architecture and the block itself all shares the LS6. The only difference really at this point is the cam and the heads of 243s and some header work to make the Z06 what it is as far as performance goes, engine wise. And with this change, the LS1 is officially back up to 350 horsepower where it should be. In 01 as well, the FRC was officially discontinued as just the FRC. That is because, like you see here, the Z06 was introduced with the same platform with plenty of differences, however. All manual transmissions in this year Ford have stronger synchros, finally. These are not stock valve stem caps, but on 2001 Plus, all of them came standard with metal caps versus plastic. The torque tube officially gets fortified and the diameter goes from a 55 to a 63 millimeter, which uses a aluminum alloy 6061. Additionally, the torque tube couplers were also fortified just to help with strength and durability. And all the additional changes for 2001 have to do with the Z06, which is a stronger clutch, red fuel roll covers, the Alcoa wheels, thinner glass, like I said earlier, a lot less padding and soundproofing for weight savings, rear intake brake cooling, front intake brake cooling, cool little badges, the LS6 243 heads, a stock titanium exhaust, and a fortified rear end. And in stock form, the Z06 does come with red brake calipers. Off the top of my head, I'm probably missing a couple Z06 changes but the whole model itself was a complete change. I have plenty of videos if you're curious. There's some other little differences in the interior as far as the moderate interior, some red seats, etc. All right, for 2002, we'll start with the quick and dirty Z06 changes. That was the less restrictive Pupcats, the less restrictive MAF, the better flowing air intake, and the revised cam, all for a total of about 20 horsepower. 2002 also introduced stronger valve springs due to the Duke cam lobes, but however, those actually proved to be more of a failure because they failed later on. 2002, 2003 has a lot of issues with valve springs for the Z06, just an FYI. And actually, you got sodium filled 
intake and exhaust valves, which is kind of neat. The piston rings were also slightly revised on the 2002 to stop a little bit of blow-by and burning of oil. The clutch strength in the 2002 Z06 was just very slightly increased. A HUD was now available standard on all Z06 models. The wheel supplier in 2002 changed from Alcoa to Speedline. They were very similar. The weight was almost identical. Uh, I do believe the Alcoa was a little stronger and just, just slightly slightly heavier but not by much and the color of the Alcoas were a little darker. These are actually a reproduction that I painted similar to Alcoa but a little darker. I just like to look a little darker rim but yeah 2002 Speedline took over from Alcoa for supplying the Z06 wheels. In 2002 Electron Blue was finally available on the Z06 and I believe on the base model as well. Probably my favorite color on a Z06 and then probably a yellow. When I got this car, I really wanted a Electron Blue, and I found this thing at a good deal, and I love it. But if I found the exact same car with the same mods, I would probably trade it in. And the end leaks that I touched on earlier, which are back in there, went from steel to aluminum. And when I washed my car earlier today, that's why the rotors looked like that. Nothing to be concerned about. In 2003, as far as mechanical changes, there really isn't outside of a redesigned fuel system, which is pretty much carried over into the C6 model. The fuel system on the C5 is very unique. It's split. It's got a crossover pipe. They totally kind of revamped it for 2003. Uh, it makes it more unique to change a fuel pump or uh, a fuel filter, if you will. I find that 2003, 2004 suffered from the most fuel gauge issues. I have a video on that separately. But yeah, 2003, they revised the fuel system altogether. And in 2004, the only change was that to the Z06. And that was the shocks were further refined, both front and rear for better launching. Front upper control arms finally got new bushings for their last year. And the rear sway bar bushings changed for whatever reason. And the last change for 2004 on the Z06 had a carbon fiber hood, which is pretty neat to say you have a 2004 Z06. That makes that car very unique. And you can get it in that commemorative color, which is that uh, slightly darker blue. And it's got really unique stripe all the way down, which I personally like. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for 2004. So there you have it. Those are all the mechanical changes from 1997 to 2004. Hope you guys found this informative. I'm sure I missed one or two, maybe a handful. Leave them below, we can all learn from this. Uh, and like I said, a 2001 up is probably more advantageous if you don't want a headache. Uh, just preview ones aren't bad cars, they just have more issues with uh, your act paneling, uh, your EBCM, uh, not as fortified couplers, your torque tubes just not as strong, uh, emissions are a little wonky, uh, your fuel system might not be as robust, but um, any C C5 in good condition is not going to be a terrible car to own. Definitely a fun little platform, which I, I fell in love with. I follow my channel. I've had two C4s, a C6, a C7, and now a C5Z, which is quickly becoming my most favorite, which is crazy. I love the C7, very refined car, very digital. A C6 is a good intermediate between analog and digital, and we'll see how the C8 is when I get it in a few months. Uh, but my dealer finally contacted me this week, by the way. My build should finally go in next month and hopefully a late September delivery, but there's so many freaking constraints. Now they're trying to ramp up the Z06. Who knows, man? It'll get here when it gets here, you know? It's a good problem to have, I guess. So, Alright guys, hope you guys like this, like I said, and I'll catch you guys next time. Mark out.